Protect your privacy online with the best VPN for gaming, ExpressVPN. And visit expressvpn.com slash gillymaster linked in the description to find out how you can get three months free. On Thursday, we received seven brand new survival maps in GTA Online, and I've had my fair share of playtime on the new maps over the past few days. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys my complete review of them. We'll go through each map one by one and discuss if they are good or bad. And along the way, I'll be giving some tips, tricks, spots, and strategies to help you beat some of these maps because they are quite difficult, especially when done solo. But before we jump right into it, I want to first give you guys some tips that will help you for every single map that we talk about today and just survival in general. The most important tip of all is to make sure you have your aim preference set to assisted aim full. A lot of you guys probably have it on assisted aim partial and just don't realize how good assisted aim full is. The main difference between the two is that assisted aim full allows you to do what's called target swapping, meaning you can switch auto aim targets just by flicking the analog stick to the left or right without having to re-aim every single time. And this helps out immensely when killing groups of enemies in a short amount of time and it's something you're absolutely going to need if you want to be to survival while solo. In terms of weapons, I recommend four. Number one, the Combat MG Mark II. If you don't have a Mark II version, it's not that big of a deal. The Mark I will do just fine, but just make sure you have a scope on this weapon. That's very important. And if you're wondering why exactly the Combat MG Mark II out of all weapons, it basically has everything that you need for a late round survival. In the early rounds, you'd be just fine with an assault rifle, but in the later rounds, you need to be able to really dish out constant damage. And the Combat MG has the highest DPS out of any other automatic weapon, with the longest lock on range and the biggest mag size. The FMJ Revolver Mark II is another weapon I would bring with you. It can two tap the helicopters that come after you in the survivals, but if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. The Combat MG can deal with the helicopters fast as well. The third weapon you'll want to bring is the Assault Shotgun, specifically for spraying when you're really surrounded by enemies. And number four, the Up and Atomizer. I'll talk about why I recommend this a little later. This might be kind of obvious, but make sure before starting one of these survivals that you have full snacks and armor because you will need these, and if you're solo, you'll most likely need a full inventory of all of them. Now in terms of the maps as a whole, they're all kind of small and they limit exactly where you can roam around. For example, if you try to get on a rooftop or any other high area, it's going to say you're outside the map and you have to return. And if it doesn't, then there's most likely going to be a prop in the way preventing you from using that spot. I also highly recommend playing with a group of players if you can. Not only does it make the survival as much easier, but it also increases the amount of money you get at the end as well, because the maps don't really cater that well to solo players. With that being said, the way that I'm going to rate the maps is mostly based on how many good holdout spots there are. If a map has a good holdout spot, I consider it a better map. And a holdout spot is essentially a place on the map that has a good vision of the enemies where you can shoot them easily, and it is also either unable to or very difficult for the enemies to flank you at and shoot you. We'll start with some of the worst maps in this batch. First we have Vespucci Canals. This map has a lot of different alleyways that you can duck behind to take cover in, and the enemies mostly come from each side of the canals near the bridge. The main issue is that it just doesn't have a very good holdout spot in it. I've tried ray gunning myself to balconies with no luck. There's a few places that offer good cover. The only problem is that they don't offer good vision to take out the enemies. They're just in strange areas. An example of this is in this alleyway, Rockstar placed a blue wall on the other side to prevent you from just hiding there and funneling the enemies into this one area to shoot them. You can kind of still use it if you hop on these boxes, the issue is that it just takes forever for the enemies to get into sight for you to shoot them, so it's not really efficient for a holdout spot. Sure you'll stay alive if you hide in here, but it's just going to take you forever to complete the waves, especially in the high rounds. Up next is Glass Heroes, another map that isn't that good for high round games unfortunately, and like the canals, there's just not a very good holdout spot. Especially for solo players, if you're in a group, there's a few spots that you can use together to protect each other from getting flanked, but none that are good at protecting you from flanks on their own. The only semi-decent one I found is by utilizing the ray gun, and this is where I recommend the ray gun, this is where it comes into play. There's these two wrecked vans here, if you shoot the ray gun at them, you can kind of create your own cover and box yourself in this corner, which provides some good cover, it's just that you don't have a very good view where you can take out the enemies, you kind of have to sit there and wait for them to get close to you, which isn't ideal, it kind of just gets boring that way. The quarry is another map with a lot of cover, and some of the cover makes it very easy to see the enemy spawns to wipe them out very fast. It does have a decent holdout spot by these green crates here, your back is protected by this green generator type thing so you can't get shot from behind here, and you do have a decent view of the area to shoot hostiles from in this spot, but you can still get overwhelmed so it's not perfect. There are a few containers around the map too that you can hide in that provide good cover but severely limit your view so those won't be very good for holding out in the long run. If you're playing this map with multiple players, it might be a lot easier since you can cover a lot of the spawns at the same time. Playing it solo though, you can't really do that, so you just get surrounded really easily. Alright, now let's get into some of the better maps, starting with Underpass. 
Underpass, when I first played on it, I wasn't really feeling it. I just didn't like the clutter everywhere, but that was until I found a good spot to take cover at. There is a destroyed van near this wall here that looks like you'd be able to get behind it, but there's an invisible wall blocking it that prevents you from doing so. So what I did is I took out my up and atomizer and shot it, and it kind of glitched to the right a bit, and then I was able to hide behind it perfectly. And this is definitely the best spot to survive on this map. I'm not sure if the van will react the same way every single time you shoot it though, you might not be able to pull this off 100% of the time, but when it does work, you can't get killed from behind here. The enemies will come in from directly in front of you, to the right of you, and to the left of you. For the spawn that's directly in front of you, you're able to just mow down a big portion of them once they get into your view with the combat MG. And the reason you need a scope on the combat MG is to increase your zoom range, which increases your accuracy. You're going to want to click on the right stick when aiming to zoom in further to tighten up the spread and hit more of your shots. If the enemies get too close for comfort, just be on the safe side and take out your auto shotty and blind fire them. This is very helpful on the top rounds because there will be times where you kind of get overwhelmed and need to just spray a bit to get rid of the threats. There are no helicopters on this map, which is a relief. The only thing you have to worry about are the on-foot enemies swarming you. And by using this strategy and hiding in this spot, I managed to complete this map entirely solo. I got through all 10 rounds, not before using most, if not all of my snacks and some armor though. Next is the Maibatsu Motors map. I would say this is probably the smallest map of them all in terms of the size of the play area. You basically have this alley and that's it. Luckily, there are a couple of spots you can use though that are very good for cover. The first one is behind the concrete near the edge of the map. The area behind you is completely blocked off so enemies cannot shoot you from behind here. They will sometimes try to get up next to you from the trailer behind you, but they won't be able to shoot you so you can just shoot them in the legs to kill them. The only way you're able to get shot here is from the front of you really. That's the only way I've ever been shot in this spot. Basically as long as you don't let the enemies get really close to you here, you'll be completely fine. The other spot is on the other side of the map behind this truck trailer. In terms of the amount of protection, it's probably better than the other spot I just showed. You have a roof over your head to protect you against helicopters which is nice. And if you're playing this with more players than just yourself, the spot is big enough for two players to hide in so one can go on each side of the truck. And there's even a trailer next to this one where another player can go. So if I was doing this with four players, I would have two players on this truck, one player on the truck to the left of this one, and one player on the first spot I showed. And doing that pretty much covers all of the enemy spawns as well. The trailer spot, you can get enemies spawning in down the alleyway close to the road. And if you shift over to the left hand side, you can get the one spawning on that side as well. The person hiding behind the concrete next to the garage can get the enemy spawning from the right side. The only thing you have to be careful of though are enemies climbing over the wall behind you in this spot because they also spawn on the hill coming from the other side of the alley. And occasionally an enemy will climb over the wall behind you and if you let that happen, you're dead. And that's actually exactly what happened in this footage. A guy came up behind me with an assault shotgun and just blasted me. I was only solo though, so it's a bit hard to watch all the angles in that aspect. If you have more players, you can easily have one person watch the wall very carefully at all times. Scrapyard, I would say, is the second best map of the bunch. This one has two very good spots that if you had a team of players, would make completing this a breeze in my opinion. The first spot is in a good old dumpster way in the back of the map. It's actually almost right on top of an enemy spawn, so you have to be careful about that. But it offers you good cover from all sides. I would say the only way you die in this spot is if you get ganked from behind. But if you are watching the minimap and are aware of where the enemies are at all times, you shouldn't have too hard of a time doing this. You also have a very good vantage point of the enemies coming from the back of the scrapyard. The only weakness of the spot is that you can't see the enemies coming from the road very well, because there's a spawn point on the road as well. Fortunately though, that's where the second spot comes into play. The second spot you want to just hop on this container here and then take cover behind this crate and just wedge yourself in there. From here you have a perfect view of the street spawn of all the enemies. You can take them out almost as soon as they spawn in with tons of cover as well. And since this spot has some verticality to it, you can also see the enemies way in the distance spawning in at the back of the scrapyard, which you could try to snipe or free aim them until they get into the auto aim range. It's really just a perfect spot, you get lots of cover, even being surrounded by enemies, they have a very hard time hitting you. You're able to blind fire from the spot too, in case you do get surrounded by enemies. Probably the only bad thing or negative about this spot is that in order to be able to shoot the enemies that are to your right, you have to first put your character facing the entrance of the scrapyard, and then aim in the direction of the enemies. So just remember, before you aim in to shoot the enemies on the right side, just make sure to move the left analog stick to the left to make sure your character isn't facing that same direction. What I like about the two spots I showed though is that they both complement each other. The person in the dumpster can make sure the person up here doesn't get overrun, and the person behind the crate can eliminate enemies spawning from the street. So with two players, you have a great strategy here. If you bring more than two players though, a good spot might be right next to this one in the ramp dumpster. You could take cover behind there. 
Or you could put someone right below the spot inside of the container, which could serve to draw aggro away from the person above, making the enemies look at two different positions, and then you could take them out accordingly. Really, the more players you have would just make the job that much easier, I feel, but two, I think, is all you would really need to pull this off. I was doing this solo, and I unfortunately died on wave 10, the final wave. I just got overwhelmed by enemies, mostly from the right side, which would have been mitigated if someone was in the dumpster clearing them out for me. And now, the final map, and the map I feel is the best one out of these seven, we have Quartz Survival. This map has by far the best spots that are very easy to get into, they give you an amazing view of the enemies, and they're all adaptable to four players. I'm confident that if I had a group of four players, we could go 20 plus rounds using these spots to be honest with you. The first one is behind the sign here, it might take you a few tries to get in, but just walk towards it and press the cover button and you should go right in. It is impossible to be shot from behind you here because, well, there's a balcony and nothing can shoot you from the balcony. It gives you a perfect view of where the enemies come from, they'll come from down the stairs straight ahead of you, down the stairs to the left of you, and across from behind the bushes where you can't see in this spot. And what the enemies will do most of the time is they'll just run out in front of you and try to get into cover without even shooting you at all, so it makes it very easy for you to just take them out here. Sometimes they'll also just stand there in the open, it's just such an amazing spot. And the greatest part about this is that you can do this with two players, you can have one on each side of the wall for maximum coverage. The other spot on this map is literally the exact same piece of cover, just on a different part of the map. You just have to take cover on the wall and then scooch over to get behind the sign, and this one gives you two other good vantage points while providing you with tons of cover. Directly in front of you, entire groups of enemies will make their way up the stairs, and once they get all the way up those stairs, you can just mow all of them down without even having them get close to the area. You also have an amazing view of the enemies that spawn at the top of the stairs, so you can take a few shots at them before they start going down. And just like the first one, you can fit two players behind this cover, so you can probably guess where I'm going with this. You have a four player team, two of them sit behind this wall, and two of them sit behind the other wall I just showed, and you can probably go on for tons of waves. The only thing that is somewhat of a threat to you in this spot are the helicopters, and this map in particular throws a lot of helicopters after you, from buzzards, cargo bobs, annihilator stealths, regular annihilators, valkyries. The good news though is that from both of these areas you can see the helicopters the moment they spawn in, so all you have to do is aim behind you and take them out before they become a nuisance. It's more of an issue when you're solo and you can't quite hit the other helicopter spawn directly away, so you have to wait for them to come in, and that can be kind of deadly. So for that, I recommend having your snack menu open while being behind this cover to fill up your health in a pinch, especially against the Annihilator because that one can do some serious damage if you're not careful. But that is going to wrap up my guide of the new survival maps. Hopefully you can now go into these survivals with a bit more knowledge of how to tackle them, and at least know which maps are the best for surviving the full 10 rounds to earn the max payout because they are paying dough money until the 20th of July. If you did enjoy or find the video helpful, feel free to leave a like, as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP related content. Let me know some strategies that I didn't cover in this video down in the comment section, I'm sure there are many more ways to beat these maps that I didn't discuss here today. Huge thank you to my channel members for your support, if you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, Thanks for watching, and have a great day.